prepares to turn to 660, 660. Let's sing of our marching orders here. Onward, Christian soldiers. Onward, Christian soldiers, marching as to war, with the cross of Jesus going on before, Christ the royal master leads against the foe. Soldiers marching as to war with the cross of Jesus going on before. At the sign of triumph, Satan's host of three on then Christian soldiers. Hell's foundations quiver at the shout of praise. Brothers, lift your voices, loud your anthems raise. Onward, Christian soldiers, marching as to with the cross of Jesus going on before. Like a mighty army moves the church of God. Brothers, we are treading where the saints have trod. We are not divided all one body we one in hope and doctrine one in charity onward Christian soldiers marching as to war with the cross of Jesus prayer tonight. Heavenly Father, it's good to be in your house. We are really, Lord, excited about what you're doing in our midst. And Lord, many times you, you move, you work in spite of us. And yet, Lord, it's such a blessing to be able to be in that, uh, in that labor with you. And uh, Lord, I pray that you would bless what goes on here tonight. And uh, Lord, watch, watch over our, our friends and our loved ones who are away right now. But yet, Lord, we've got a message for tonight and a need. So, God, I pray that you would meet with us. We pray with these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Number 669. We are more than conquerors. 669. Oh. 
you know how uh, things went today we we uh, took in twelve hundred dollars for Pam so anybody need anybody needs a loan there she there's the lady with the cash and uh, I, I think that that's going to be a, a really help to get you on your way to Israel and you better take a lot of pictures you ladies okay and uh, we'll have uh, we'll we better come back is that what you said uh, yeah uh, yeah, yeah. The church will have to close if you two ladies stayed in Israel. We didn't know what we'd have to completely re, reorganize. Uh, hey, we had also today. Uh, it was, by the way, I thought it was a good good morning that we had. I really do a good good at attendance. I knew that there's there's probably three or four families that are out of town, and I'm 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 thinking, oh boy, oh boy, we're not going to have anybody in church. Well, we had a good crowd in church, and I appreciate that. Thank you for your faithfulness. And then uh, this afternoon at 3 o'clock, I didn't know what to expect for this memorial service and uh, for this gentleman who, who passed away out in the farm field. And uh, we had, I don't know, did anybody actually count? But I think if it, if I, there was at least, well, there were, there were 20 people in this. I, I was sitting over there and I counted 20 people in this section. There was more people in this section and more people in this section. So I'm going to say all together, I'm going to guess that we probably had 70 people here. And several of our church family were able to be here. Thank you for doing that. Uh, it was nice. Uh, we had uh, the Van Dyke families were here from the farm. And other folks that, from, that, are, that have interaction with them were here. And um, I just, uh, I, was, I was thrilled to be able to do that. And w one of the Miss, Mrs. Van Dykes, okay, there were three, at least three of them here today. Uh, one of them told me that, uh, she said, we've just been really confused why some church hasn't picked this up. And uh, because they have to be careful with all of the, uh, the stipulations on bringing in people from out of the country. They can't coerce them to go to church. They could lose, they could lose the privilege of being able to use those workers, which would be devastating for their, for their, uh, for their farms. And so uh, they've just been sort of waiting for somebody to come along, and, and they were very uh, affirmative, uh, very thankful that we as a church here are reaching out. And I said, we, I said, our really, our only apprehension is we're, we're not Spanish speakers. We don't have, you know, we've got a couple people that can speak Spanish and understand a little bit, but nobody who can just get up and preach and lead this thing. And God has brought people together. And and they were uh, very, very pleased by that. And so the plans, what we're doing with that I, uh, is that we're going to go uh, a little bit, uh, we're taking step by step. 
this year has been a learning experience over last year. As we said, we're going to do this, and then we, we did a little bit last year, and then we did quite a bit more this year. And now what we can do, we know who our people are, we know who we need to contact, we know a little better on the circumstances. And so next year, it'll just be that much more. And I'm telling you, in my heart, there is a Spanish-speaking independent Baptist church uh, either in our basement or with their own building somewhere that we've helped start. I believe that that, may, that very likely, that's, that's my vision, and I think that's the vision of many of you as well. Wouldn't that be a wonderful thing to be able to do for our community and for the, for the kingdom? So uh, that went extremely well. Jason uh, Vasquez from over here in, um, he's not quite all the way to, he's between KPAC and, what is it? He's in Kimball, and uh, he's been able to come, and he's just excited about it, and he's been a great help to us, and he, he gave the gospel. Uh, one, of, one of the Mr. Mr. Van Dykes was have, had a translator with his phone, and he was following along somewhat, and he said he gave the gospel. He went right down the Romans Road and gave the gospel. And so those men all heard the gospel today. And some of them maybe for the first time. So we're just, we're just going to keep going forward with that thing. And uh, uh, it's God's work. It's, God, it's God's plan. It's, God's, it's not ours. We have nothing to claim. And so we have nothing to fear. And the Lord's just going to, as the Lord opens the doors for us, we're going to just keep moving forward with it. So, uh, so we had that to, to tell you today. Um, also, uh, things that aren't in the bulletin. I probably won't make a lot of these announcements uh, that are in the bulletin because we can read. But um, uh, the, the slip, the paper, I, I just wasn't aware in my head here that uh, I, I, Pam had showed it to me and I didn't put two and two together, that the sign-up sheet for food for Ignite, the Ignite Youth Missions Conference, is on the on the, the table in the back here, on the uh, usher's table, okay? So that's back there, and you just sign up. Something We'll notify you when to start bringing that stuff in. Uh, but the idea here is that our church is going to supply the food for about 75 people for three days, okay? And we did it last year, and it was such a blessing. It was such a blessing. So please write your name clearly on there. Make it very clear what you're saying you're going to bring just so that we know that it's covered. And what we'll do is be able to contact you and in, in, in if there's any question or, or to let you know about details. So, I mean, there's, there's hamburger, hamburger buns, chips, there's uh, spaghetti sauce, there's uh, all kinds of stuff. What's some other stuff on there? Eggs, are there eggs on there? Uh, no. Hot chocolate. We went through a lot of hot chocolate last year. It was freezing cold and rainy. And those kids were freezing, so we went through a lot of hot chocolate. Uh, aren't, you, aren't you glad we're in a church that's going somewhere and doing something? I just, I just love it. It's just so much going on. Also, I mentioned this in choir. Uh, we are, Abby, just about ready to uh, move into her house. And uh, I'm embarrassing her now. I embarrassed Pam this morning. I'll embarrass Abby tonight. And so we're having a little bit of like a housewarming for her. And uh, we have a registry at Walmart, just some of the household items that she still needs. Remember, she came from the mission field, and most of the stuff that she had, which was minimal, was much of that was left at the mission field. And so she's, she's got some things that she needs, and if you're interested in, in uh, helping with that, you can go, if you have the Walmart app, you can go to the Walmart app, and if that just gives you a headache, you can go and see Brother Kendall. He's got the list and knows what needs to be done. So if you want to help out with that, and just some, uh, mainly just, usually more just some household items, and just to help Abigail get into her house. Okay, uh, next Saturday is the church harvest party at 5 o'clock, and please sign up for that. There's horseshoes, cornhole, hayride, and you don't have to do any of those. You can sit here and smile and watch everybody else do it, <coughs> if you would like. Uh, and we're going to have cider and apple dessert contest, chili cook-off, Sign up on the bullet board in the lobby for the games, a contest, to be a judge or to bring food. Something I didn't mention this morning is there will be a missions committee meeting following the morning service next week, October 8th. All, all members, and it doesn't mean all members of the mission committee, all members of the church are invited to come. The more the merrier. We want you involved in the missions committee. 
So we're going to have a meeting next Sunday after the morning service. Okay, ushers, why don't you come at this time? Uh, as they're coming, I wanted to mention that I, uh, somebody asked me, said, well, Pastor, <coughs> I thought we were going to take up an offering for the building fund. And as of right now, we're not really, we're, we're not planning on doing that. Uh, but it's just the idea of you, whatever the Lord lays on your heart, put it in the offering plate. Make sure it's clearly designated uh, on the check or on the envelope. Make sure it's clearly designated for the foundation or building fund. Okay? And that way we know that it gets to where it needs to go. Brother Ron, why don't you pray for our offering tonight? Amen. I'd like to thank the Lord this evening that He is my light. Yeah. Since He's gone, we got to be the light in this world. You know, let our light shine. Let's all stand and sing number 668. Brother Eugene, what would be the equivalent of 75 people in, uh, is it a platoon or a division? What is that in your experience in the military being a cook? It's cooking for 75 people every day. A hundred? Okay, well that's close. Well, let's all stand and sing together and we'll be praying for the folks that are going to be signing up for feeding that, that bunch. <laughs> Dare to be a Daniel, 668. Standing by a purpose true, heeding God's command. Honor them, the faithful few, all hail to Daniel's bed. Daniel, dare to stand alone, dare to have a purpose firm, dare to make it known. Many mighty men are lost, daring not to stand, who for God hath been a host by joining Daniel's band. Dare to be a Daniel, dare to stand alone, dare to have a purpose firm, dare to make it known. Many John. 
giants great and tall stalking through the land headlong to the earth would fall if met by Daniel's band dare to be a Daniel dare to stand alone dare to have a purpose firm dare And shout for Daniel's band Dare to be a Daniel Dare to stand alone Dare to have a purpose firm Dare to make it known Amen. You may be seated. Pam will now come to sing for us. second here. One. <laughs> that one's on. <laughs> Stain. He washed it 
bright white as snow, white as snow. Well, happy October, everyone. Here it is. The thing that we have greatly feared has now come upon us. And uh, here we are, it's October. And uh, although it's not supposed to feel like it the next couple of days, but uh, it's October and being October 1st, what we have, we'll have five Sundays in the month of October. And we'll have our, our fifth Sunday fellowship. I think it's the 29th or something like that on that fifth Sunday. And what we're going to do this, this, uh, this month is we're going to have our service in the morning and then we'll have our lunch and then we'll come back for our second service. But the second service is going to be a singspiration. Okay, so if you've got a special that you want to sing or uh, something like that, just be thinking of that. And we'll have a number of songs, uh, you know, family if you want to sing together or something like that, that would be good. But that gives you the whole month to be thinking about that. So we're going to be maybe having a sign-up sheet and such and we'll be having that. Uh, coming up on the last Sunday of the month. Let's take our Bibles tonight and turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. And I'm going to pick up somewhat where I left off last, last week. And as I was talking about uh, praying for those that we love and and um, how to have that proper uh, prayer time. And I made mention that uh, what does Satan do? What is his goal? His goal is to blind the eyes of the unsaved. And their eyes are blinded. They are subject to him. Their eyes are blinded. And so just by way of review to say this, when we go out and try to win somebody to Christ, we cannot do that in our own power. Uh, I actually had a, uh, some training where they said to do this. Just nod your head and say, you'd like to accept Jesus as your Savior, wouldn't you? And to be able to convince somebody to pray the sinner's prayer. And uh, I, that never settled well with me. Because many times, if, if the Holy Spirit is not drawing someone, they can't be saved. They're not going to be saved because you gave them a mental argument. What happens is they have to have the blinders removed, and that is a supernatural event. Anytime a child of, a, a child of the devil becomes a child of God, it is a spiritual event. It's what it is. The, it is a, a focal point of spiritual warfare. And if you uh, were to, uh, to look at one of the songs we sang tonight, I can't remember which one, and you look up in the upper right-hand corner of the hymnal, under the category in which it's, it's described, it's a spiritual warfare. There is spiritual warfare going on to keep the eyes of the unsaved blinded. And it would be an audacious, foolish thing to think that any of us could remove the blinders off of the unsaved without the Holy Spirit. It'd be foolishness. So we bathe those things in prayer. And some of you have told me you've been witnessing to somebody and you've been, you've been trying to influence them for Christ and you're just not sure when to, uh, to, when to sort of pull the trigger. You are absolutely correct. You hesitate on that somewhat. I, I heard it said that, uh, heard it stated as, and I'm, I, I, by the way, it, if somebody hears this and thinks I'm some kind of a heretic, well, just so be it. You know, I feel very uh, confident in my church, okay? Um, but uh, I think sometimes we try to pick green fruit. Jesus said the field is white unto harvest. Okay, that doesn't mean that everybody is ready to be saved. 
everybody needs to be saved and everybody needs to have a movement of the Holy Spirit in their life. Uh, I like the way Tommy Sexton said it. I heard him say it. He said, when you make a contact, the Holy Spirit begins a work. And it's not my work that wins somebody to Christ. It's the Holy Spirit that wins somebody to Christ. And I must be that willing servant to do as the Holy Spirit leads me to do. And sometimes that may be a confrontation. But you better be spiritual before you confront somebody about salvation. You better be right with God and be sensitive to the Holy Spirit of God because it is spiritual. It's not about your rhetoric. It's not about how glib you can, glibly you can speak. It's not about how eloquent you are or how tricky you are in getting somebody into a corner doctrinally. That's not the idea. The idea is to let the Holy Spirit work and be a tool of the Holy Spirit of God. Because Satan has blinded their eyes. You go and knock on the door and somebody says, uh, uh, I'm not interested, you stinking blankety blank uh, whatever, and slams the door. Well, you walk away and say, well, that one wasn't ready. What were they? That one wasn't ready. I've had it happen a few times in my life where I've been talking to somebody and they just come out and say, what, do I, you know, what must I do to be saved? I'm burdened about this. I'm, I'm confused. I want... I just remember sitting at a restaurant with a young man. He just looked at me, and he said, Brother Dufour, I just need to get saved. He said, how do I do this? Well, I didn't know. Well, that was hard. That was hard, wasn't it? It's like just barely bumping the tree, and the fruit fell off. Okay? Uh, uh, but the, blinded, the blindedness on people's eyes is because of the power of, of, of satanic forces. It's a spiritual warfare. And over in, but that's not where it ends uh, because Satan attempts to blind the eyes of God's people. Eugene, it's nice to see you out there with your glasses on. You seeing a little more clearly? Very good, okay. Uh, and uh, Eugene had two his cataracts removed from, from his eyes, and uh, it's good to see him out there with his glasses on. See, I see you out there. If you're wondering, I can see you. This is not television, okay? <laughs> all right, I can see you. And uh, yet, you know, what the devil wants to try to do, he wants to try to give us all cataracts. I mean, extreme. He wants to blind us and confuse us uh, so that we don't really know who we are or what our purpose is. He wants to keep us ignorant. He wants to blind our eyes so that we would not see spiritual things. Now, I want to read this, 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Did I tell you that? 1 Corinthians chapter 2, and we're going to talk a little bit about this spiritual warfare tonight. I think over the next few weeks, I uh, might be going back to this. Some of this I have preached one time or another, but I mean this is, the, this is the heart of Christian growth. This is something that we all need to understand. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, beginning chapter 11. I never heard the term spiritual warfare until I was probably 40 40 years old, grew up in church, never heard it. Never heard about this spiritual warfare. Never heard anything about what I'm talking about tonight. Never heard anything about it. Grew up in a Bible-breaching church, uh, and, uh, uh, but I never heard anything about it. Please don't go to a Christian bookstore and think that everything in their spiritual warfare section is good because 95% of it's charismatic. Okay, um, But there's a lot of good stuff out there as well. But so we see here in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 11... For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of man which is in him? Even so the things of God knoweth no man but the spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual but the natural man, look at this, but the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he that is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself the judge of no man. For who hath known the mind of the Lord, that he, might, that he may instruct him, but we have the mind of Christ." Okay, now what I'm looking at in here, have I prayed? Let's pray together. Father, we ask that you would bless this time. 
uh, Lord, as we go into something even more of a Bible study type of a format tonight. Lord, I pray that you'd help we Christians to be alert, to wake up, to be sensitive to this fact of being blinded to truth. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Satan desires to have you that he may sift you as wheat. This is what Jesus told to Peter. Satan hath desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. It is Satan's desire. Oh, we all know this, that when you trusted Christ as your Savior, the devil just left you alone from that time on. Never had a worry, never had a care, never, never, never had a problem. Everything was just peachy, just peachy. Everything was beautiful. Never had any issues. We all know that's not true. Matter of fact, the fight starts. Uh, there's a fight going on for your soul, and then once the devil no longer has your soul, he hates you all that much more and wants to destroy you. The Bible says that the thief has come forth to steal and to kill and to destroy. But I am come that ye might have life and that ye might have it more abundantly. Okay, that thief is our enemy, is Satan, and he still wants to kill. He wants to destroy. He wants to steal. So you as a believer, we as believers have possessions that, that are ours. Now can he actually take them away from us? Not necessarily, but he can render them useless. How? By reading in this verse, if we as Christians act as natural men, not as spiritual men and ladies, we're blinded. Every Christian has the capability of turning away from truth. God is a benevolent dictator. He gives us options even as Christians. Now there's always results and, and, and there's always going to be a response to those decisions that we make. But the fact is, is that you as a child of God can will yourself not to lose your salvation, but to turn away from God. And, be, and, and really wind up putting on spiritual blinders. The Bible says that in Galatians 5.16, it says, Walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. That tells me that we all have the Spirit, but you know what else we have? We've got the flesh. The Bible says to walk in the Spirit, and you're not going to fulfill the lusts of the flesh. That means you can be a Christian and be living in the flesh. Okay, uh, you can be living in the flesh. That's not what God's plan is for you. Uh, Galatians 5.25 says this, If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let's just think about that for a second. If you live in the Spirit, that means you're quickened, you're, 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 you're alive in Christ, you have the Spirit of God on you. The Spirit of God is not with you. He's never going to leave you. He's never going to forsake you. But if you live in the Spirit, then the Scripture says you were supposed to walk in the Spirit. That lends, lends itself to me believing that you can choose to walk in the Spirit or not. Whether you're walking in the Spirit or not, you're still living in the Spirit, meaning you're alive in Christ. We have people that are alive in Christ, but living for the world. They're called carnal Christians. Carnal Christians. So carnal Christians or fleshly Christians walk after the flesh, not after the Spirit, even though they're living in the Spirit. Now why would we do that? It's Satan's great deception toward the believer to keep God's children walking after the natural man, rather than walking after the Spirit. Okay, if I could ask you what your, uh, your vice is, what is it that, that sort of, what, what gets you? Uh, is it your temper? Uh, is it your, what part of your attitude stinks? Okay, uh, what part of you, you know, it's just, it, 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 I think we all have things that are triggers that we have that we have to be careful of because we are susceptible to whatever it is. Carnality, 
uh, uh, fantasies of the mind, anger, bitterness, holding grudges, deceitfulness, whatever it might be. We all have something like that. And my brother, my sister, I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to confess something to you as your pastor. I have got to be careful or else I'm going to find myself walking after the flesh, not walking after the Spirit. Now, nobody said amen. Okay? Would you say that you have to be careful or you will, you will walk after the, the natural man, after the flesh, rather than after the Spirit? Yeah. I think that's something that, this is the, the, the nexus. This is the contact point. This is the, the bullseye of spiritual warfare. For the lost, it's to keep them blinded so they don't receive the gospel of Christ. There are probably 50 men in here this, morning, this afternoon that heard the gospel in their language. Can you imagine the gospel was preached in Spanish from right here inside of our auditorium? Isn't that, ah, I got goosebumps. Okay? Now what they do with it is their business. It, my burden, but it's their business. Well, I want to say even tonight, in a room of this many people, undoubtedly, there are some folks in this room who are walking after the flesh, not after the spirit, and what you have done is you have allowed Satan to fool you, trick you, blind you. I've often wondered this, what would make a 16-year-old, beautiful 16-year-old girl starve herself to death? Well, I think that's the devil. He's come to kill and to steal and to destroy. Or, uh, and I, we, my wife primarily has worked with folks like this, uh, young ladies. I've had a minimal amount to do with it. She's done a lot of the major counseling. But do you know, I was telling my Sunday school class this this morning, my boys, because we're studying the Christian thought life, and I think that's great for 12, 13, 14-year-old young men. And uh, we're studying the Christian thought life. And I said, what would cause some attractive, active young lady or young man to take a, I don't even like to say it, because my little girl's in here, but to to take a, a, a razor and, and, and cut themselves. You say, well, that doesn't happen. Ooh, that happens. That happens a lot. A lot. What would cause somebody to do that? I'm going to tell you what it is. It's satanic manipulation. It's spiritual warfare. Now, then I'll go a step farther. Something that, because I don't know, as far as I know, we don't have any cutters in here, and by the looks of most of us in here, we are certainly not anorexic. <laughs> I beat anorexia. Okay? Uh, uh, but, uh, but what would cause, oh, here's a different one. What would cause a young person who grew up in a godly Christian home and going go to church and faithful in the house of the Lord, uh, what would cause that 16-year-old to run off with somebody that they work with at McDonald's? And it happens. I'm telling you, the devil doesn't play fair. It's spiritual warfare. Well, that person professed to be a Christian. Well, they very likely are a Christian. But Christians can be manipulated. Now, I'm telling you, something to, is when we start going down this path of living after the flesh, not, not living after the spirit, we're in danger. Because now what's happened, rather than us having the, the place of superiority over the devil, what we have done, the Bible says, submit yourself to God, resist the devil, and he'll flee from you. When we reverse that, we're in big trouble. But what would cause a child of God to choose to have anger and malice toward the other people of God? and be backbiting and criticizing and gossiping and slandering and lying and angry toward other Christians. When God has showed us so much grace, what would cause us to do that? I'm telling you what causes us to do that. It's called spiritual warfare, and you're losing, sweetheart. I found myself at times on the wrong side of a battle. You ever do that? Whoa, 
whoa, I'm on the wrong side of this issue. I find myself sometimes being the one who has the bitterness or has the critical spirit or has the anger. Well, I'm just tired. Well, bless God, go take a nap. <laughs> Give us all a break. Good heavens, heavens to Betsy. I, I'll be careful how I say this, but I made it very clear in my household. I got four daughters. You, yeah, I hate to say this. Should I say it, David? Go ahead. Okay, I said, you don't have a monthly excuse to be ornery. <laughs> we had a talk, didn't we, Abby? We talked about that. Mom, we, we, we talked about that. That didn't always work out good when I'd say something like that. But I, I tell you, I tell you, I made my, I made my stand, you know. Uh, but we, we, what happens when we overcome with these things? Maybe, maybe it's not any of them. Maybe it's not anger, and that, maybe it's fear. Maybe it's anxiety. Do you know, Brother Joe? Anxiety is a. Uh, off of what, what's the word? Uh, uh, when you have a runny nose, when you have a cold, that's a symptom. Okay, when you have a symptom. Uh, that anxiety is a symptom of walking in the flesh? It is. It is. Fear? He's not giving us the spirit of fear. That's not a Christian, that's not a godly principle. That's not a fruit of the spirit, fear. What is it then? Mm. It's flesh. And what many Christians, I'm, I'm sorry to, to say it, but having been now a Christian for half a century, half a century I've been a Christian. I've been a Christian for over 51 years. My opinion, my, honestly, my humble could be right, could be wrong opinion. This is just a stab in the dark. Most Christians never quite make it across the line into spiritual living. No, I'm not referring to any of you. We've all made it here. We're all, we're all doing just fine. That's not meant to be critical of anybody. That's just an observation. Uh, I really believe that that many Christians don't have a prayer life. I mean, they don't have a prayer life. I mean, they don't, I, they've hardly ever gotten real with God in prayer. I think there's a majority of Christians, I'm so sad to be able to have to say this, I believe a majority of Christians have never really read God's word and had the spirit of God speak to them and they glean something out of the word of God that God gave them. That's not the way God wants us to live. He's come that we might have life and that we might have it more abundantly. That's not the way he wants us to live. So this is what happens. Hey, once you got saved, you kicked the devil in the head. He'll never have you. He'll not, his, his fate is sealed, but so is yours. He's going to hell. I wish he'd just get over it and go there. Okay? Uh, uh, he's going to hell and you're going to heaven. He can't do anything about that to change that, but what he can do is he can make you have a miserable trip to heaven. Because he's come forth to, to steal and to kill and to destroy anything that is of God. He hates, he wants to destroy it. I want to challenge you tonight to see the fact that there is a warfare. This is not something that just takes place for missionaries over in uh, uh, Mozambique. Okay? Over in Africa. Although it seems to be out more in the open on the mission field. It really does. But the mission field has moved to the United States of America, the U.S. of A. And Satan is no longer manipulative. He just writes smack out in people's faces. And then we as Christians, if we're not careful, we develop a spirit of fear, a spirit of anxiety, a spirit of bitterness. Why? Because we start 
those are manifestations, that's a word I was looking for, manifestations of a fleshly, carnal walk rather than a spiritual walk. See, this is a challenge. I'm preaching to myself. This is a challenge. This is a challenge to me. You ever feel like going and digging a hole somewhere and climbing in that hole and grabbing a rock and pulling it over to the front of the hole and sticking it in the front of the hole and just lay there in the dark? You ever felt that way? That's called depression. I don't know if you've ever dealt with depression. I've dealt with depression. I'm not ashamed to say it. I've had to battle with depression. But you know what depression is? Walking after the flesh, not walking after the spirit. It is a spiritual problem. It's not, uh, do I think that sometimes some people need a little bit of medication to, to help them because of a chemical imbalance? I, I'm not a doctor, so I'm not going to say no to that. I think maybe there is some validity to that. But everybody with depression doesn't need a pill, and a pill rarely fix, fixes your depression. It's a spiritual battle. There's a spiritual warfare raging, and that spiritual warfare has to do with deceiving the people of God, making us feel like we're defeated when He's defeated. Like God's the enemy when He's the enemy. Like we're in bondage when He's in bondage. Whether we're good, He makes us feel like we're on our way to hell when He's on His way to hell. That, that maybe uh, what we're hearing is a lie when the fact is that He's a liar. It's spiritual warfare. And what do we get? So many Christians are sitting on the, on the sidelines with, a, with, a, uh, with, a, uh, uh, with, a, with blinders on. They can't get out and work the fields for Christ and have an abundant Christian life. Why? Because the devil has rendered them blind because they followed after the natural man. Satan's own great sin had to do with power and authority. And what he wants to do now is he wants to have power and authority over the child of God. And I want to just make it very clear tonight, and I'm going to end with this. He doesn't have authority in the life of a Christian. I have told the Christian to go to hell. I mean the Christian. The, 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 the boy, take that, off the, take that off the video. I have told the devil to go to hell so many times that i got to be careful that I don't say it too much outward because somebody may not understand exactly what I mean. Or I might mess it up like I just did. Yep. I'm telling you what. You know, the old devil, what I'd like to do is I, I hope before he is... <laughs> Uh, Josh, uh, I hope, I hope before he, they, he gets thrown out into eternal damnation and condemnation, I would like just to get one punch. Just one. Because he has taken that person and that person and that person and that person out of the fellowship of God's people, out of abundant Christian living, and set them aside to this ornery, negative, critical, fearful, anxious life when God wants us to live abundantly. Hey, heaven's your home. Just think, it's only a while. The sun comes up in the morning. Oh, they longed for the day. Remember that Paul when they were on the ship? They longed for the day. They wanted the sun to shine. They wanted the sun to come up. They longed for the day. You ever just long for the day? Yes, that's understandable. But listen, now the day, the morning's coming. The dawn, the dawn is coming. We win regardless of how the devil wants to make us feel. Amen. I got way off script tonight. But I think that that's what God wanted me to say. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you, dear God, that we have that opportunity we are more than conquerors lord i believe that was the song that had the spiritual warfare tag on it lord thank you that we are more we're not just conquerors we're more than conquerors through christ who loves us so lord i pray that those that are set aside right now whether it be by a carnal mind uh, a wicked mind or because of um heartache and because of bitterness and because of anxiety or hurt or whatever, fear or whatever it might be. Oh God, I pray that you would restore them to abundant Christian living. 
I pray, dear God, that the, the enemy, the enemy would be bound away from your people. I pray tonight in, in spiritual warfare prayer that Satan would have no part of this place, the, de the demons of hell would have no sway in this house and with these people. I believe I can say in the name of Jesus, I pray that Satan and all of his demonic hosts, you stay away from these people. These are God's people. This is God's church. We are God's children, and you have no right to us. You have no authority over us. You have no power over us. Get away and stay away. Oh, God, I pray that you'd help us to walk in truth. The old devil's a liar. Help us to walk in truth in truth tonight. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's all stand. Has God burdened your heart? Why don't you use the altar tonight? Why don't you come? We'll sing a hymn of invitation. This one's a little different. Number 400.